everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Well, the great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, like a dog for me. Meet me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if Mom and Dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. The foundations of democracy are bathed in blood. If you want to make a political statement with a public work, you build it big. The point is, is that no one had ever done anything like this, and hardly anyone has ever done anything like it since. Engineering an Empire. Aha, uh-huh. welcome to Everything Old is New Again. This is Douglas Viviani with the ever-inventive David Cohen. Yes, welcome. Why are you inventive? What is that? Uh, well, today's show is about ancient inventions. And that was our buddy, the first time we've done this. We used a clip from Peter Weller introducing Engineering and Empire, which is a great series. You have to watch this. It's on uh, uh, History Channel. It's done, but yeah, you can watch the reruns. And he's been on our show like eight or ten times. It seems like. And it's the first time we're using <laughs> using his clip from his professional work on our show. Does that make sense? And without his permission, apparently. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be cool with it. Why not? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah he, he would. Because we're talking about one of his favorite topics, which are ancient inventions. This is the thing. Um, I think in this show, we're going to discover that all these inventions that you've forgotten or misplaced in your mind in your house and take for granted are things that existed for the longest time and that maybe were invented by the Egyptians or the Romans or the Greeks, uh, just really old, old things besides the wheel. Yeah, you th- things that you think, oh, that was probably invented like 50 years ago or 100 years ago, something like that. No. Yes, no. exactly. Since and, and- time... What, I don't know. In memoriam. Phrase. Yeah, there you go. And I'll tell you what's cool about it is that that's exactly what everything old is new again, is we're looking at the old and saying we have improved upon some of these things, maybe, uh, and maybe not, but let's take a look at them and, and we revisit them, put a shine of light on them, and, and see that they are the foundation of the things that we're doing today. We'll start off with some basics, and then we're going to get into some fun ones where there are actually inventions and things that have been discovered that our technology today and our archaeologists and our scientists can't even figure out what this product or whatever this item is, is used for. Right. So I think that's pretty cool. And then yeah. we may introduce some of our own inventions uh, that uh, will deal with that copyright issue as we go. We might. Yeah, issue, we might do that. If anybody steals any of them. But we have some, some good inventions coming up. So stay tuned for that. So just, just to start off, I have some interesting thoughts about the Romans. The Romans did a lot of stuff. We know that they were around for about 900 years, I believe, as a society. But um, did you know that the Romans were the ones that in- established in the military medical corps a uh, medical section of the Roman army that would follow the army and try to repair the damage done to their soldiers. Ah, like a roaming mash unit. Basically. Right. But their goal was to get them back right then and there into the battle. Right. <laughs> they weren't right. sending them back home to, to yeah. Italy, you know. Oh, here, here's your arm. I got it over here. <laughs> here, see if you can, uh, I don't know, hit somebody with it. Right, exactly. You, we're going to sharpen the, uh, the the bone there, and you can use it as a spear now. I'll get back in there. It's, uh, but, but they did have that, and what they did do was pretty cool, is they would dip their medical tools in hot water. I mean, they had the right idea to disinfect them before surgery. They invented the tool, just like, or, or the a tool, like a bronze scalpel, a obstetric hook. Oh, boy. A bone drill. Can you imagine? They had no oh. electricity. What that drill must have been like. like just like a crank or cranking something. Cranking it, right? yeah. Forceps, which is hard to believe. And they used some of these. They even had the t- some techniques I saw somewhere where they could do cesarean birthing techniques. Is that where Caesar came from? C- Caesar- the you Caesar know what? That's very interesting. You're probably right. 
I didn't look that up. I didn't see that. It's not Wikipedia. It's a, a, a article on Rome, Ro- ancient Roman some adventures. scary but, stuff. I mean, if yeah. I was a Roman soldier and I was injured and I saw them coming at me with one of those tools, <laughs> I take my Roman dagger and I just I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd rather go that way. Yeah, they, they they had to <laughs> listen. Let's put it this way: in the Civil War, all they did was uh, not all, but a lot of times they just amputated. Yeah. to keep someone alive. Right. It's not, I, I don't same know. Principle. Now we got uh, probably the same stuff. Yeah. But then again, maybe not, because they were smart enough to do cesareans. Well, not on the bat. I mean, that's a way from but the military was, battlefield. I doubt <laughs> some, that there were any some uh, female Roman warrior about to give birth on but, the battlefield. But I would say this: um, in the Middle Ages, I don't think they did that. No. So that all that that technique was lost was, until yeah. quite some time later. So that's pretty cool. Do you have any others uh, yourself that you might have? Well, yeah, uh, being a, a, a city dweller living in an apartment, one thing I realized or never realized, actually, was that, you know, the whole apartment, multi-story apartment structure was started by the Romans. It was called something like insula or insulae. And, and basically, for the poor people, these multi-story buildings were built. Um, usually the cheapest rooms were at the top. Uh, owing to the inability to escape in the event of a fire, the lack of any water, running water up there. Um, and windows are really small, usually face the street with like these iron bars on them. So they were dangerous places to live, unhealthy, prone to fires because of overcrowding and haphazard cooking arrangements. Um, but, you know, they survived over time, and, and we're still using them, obviously, around right. the around the. America today. Now, we know the Romans had running water and sewage, which we, you know, basically that's another invention. We shouldn't go over that. That It's right. a pretty, I mean, you'll get to that in a minute. But my question is, did those apartments have running water? I had heard that they did. Yeah, apparently the ones at the bottom. I guess it was easier to get the running water at the bottom. But if you were on the top floor, right. I guess they had no way of getting, getting it up to up. you. But yeah. so bottom, the bottom floor had, had the toilets and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, the idea of the penthouse concept back then was probably Reverse. inversed. Right. Right. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, I have one. They probably made a lot of these apartments by concrete. And with concrete, the Romans invented concrete. Think where, we, where would we be without concrete? And think about all the things that still exist made of their concrete, including the Colosseum. Right. Which is another invention that is basically the same today. Yeah. The the Colosseum is, if you haven't been there, they've got staging underneath yeah. the flooring. Which is totally exposed now. But right. Yeah. Now those are those That's little, where the lions were kept and all that. Right. And, you could, and they could also raise people and, yeah. and things up above. It also was waterproof. They, they would fill it with water and have ship battles in there sometimes. Cool. It had a covering. It had a dome. It was made of, uh, you know, they would pull these... Um, I guess you'd, you know, was it like cloth, a cloth, dome? cloth dome, but they had that for the sun. Mm. And of course, it had the huge seating. I don't know how many. I think it's pretty sure around 50,000. It was large, yeah. Very in the large. Coliseum. It, it still exists to this day. And But that basic idea. The model is used today. I mean, you, you tell me the one that they're building in Belmont for the Islanders. They're using this as a round structure crazy, with seats it? around the, you know, it's the same exact thing. So that's that's kind of amazing. How about one that they found, you have any that, that they can't explain? Oh, from way back when. Yes. While you're looking, I, got, yeah, no, I, I have one. Oh, you have ahead, one, Andy? Yeah, I, I do. But okay, you, go ahead. Go, go. Um, they found this, okay, so how do, how do I describe this? Um, they found this thing called flexible glass. And it was made by some craftsmen, apparently. It, it was hard to break. Um, it was a drinking bowl. And this craftsman brought it to the Roman emperor, uh, I believe it was Tiberius Caesar, as a gift. Um, but the great thing about this unbreakable glass bowl was that uh, Caesar took the gift, appreciated it, um, and then beheaded the inventor for fear that such a material could undermine the value of gold and silver. Wow. So, yeah. Thanks for the bowl. Oh. Off with your head. And he and he kept it to himself and didn't spread the word. I presume. No, apparently they just kept it secret. Um, yeah. Okay. Weird, right? Yeah, not the greatest result. You thought you would. No, he's, the guy's figuring. Oh, I'm cashing in here. Yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> uh, here's one. It's called the Baghdad batter, Baghdad battery from 200. I should say 2500 BC. 
They found this thing. It's a, a terracotta pots containing a copper and, and cylinder housing with a single iron rod. The replicas of the pots are filled with uh, electrolytes and could produce voltage of approximately two volts. So it's a battery that's producing two volts of power. I wouldn't call it power, but energy. <laughs> um, what they use it for? Maybe the transistor radios? Yeah, probably? right. I mean, if they can't figure out why in the world they would have this and what would it be used for. iPhone charger? I don't know. Can't think uh, of we, it. We've got to call the doctor in on this, Dr. Viviani, and see if there was any kind of otherworldly... Ah, I see. Like a ufo ...discussion based. about this. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure there is. <laughs> we'll be back right at this. Everything old is do it again to continue talking all good things about ancient inventions. We'll be back right at this. Everything old is do it again. <laughs> You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Yeah, hey, Douglas and David, i got to say, I was interviewed on NPR by Scott Simon, another hero, but you guys are my new heroes, and I easily include you into the Scott Simon milieu of brilliant guys on radio. Oh, man, wow, so. thank you. Hi, this is Bob Breyer, and we're Everything Old is New Again with... David Cohen and Douglas Viviani. Ah, we are. That's exactly right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Breyer. Here's yeah, the... he finally got the order right. <laughs> David Cohen and Douglas Viviani. Yeah, what, I don't know what happened there. It's a little... Uh, okay. Uh, it's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Listen, as long as I'm mentioned, I don't care. Um, <laughs> exactly. Here's the thing. That's Dr. Peter Weller, who's uh, got uh, advanced degrees in... Um, art history, and there's Dr. Bob Breyer, who teaches in Stony Brook, and he's been teaching for 20 years. We've had him on the show, uh, Ancient Egyptian, and he's got some tremendous knowledge, both of them do, about the ancients and their inventions and what they've done. So it would have been and should have been a good idea to have them actually on the show I to was, talk I about I was going to ask you that on the air, but I just figured <laughs> you probably didn't have an answer, so... so. I, I lent ourselves, we've lent their voices to introduce us, so it's sort of a handoff to us as the new experts. But it would be good to to do another show with one or both of them on to yes, talk about this. I, I agree with you. I'm going to try to actually line that up. It'd be cool to have both of them on. At the same, at the same time. time. Do they know each other? They don't. And they, I, I get, I, well, one's an Egyptian guy and one's more of the Roman. I, it would be interesting to have that them. That makes for great radio. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> have them argue over which is the better civilization, the Roman civilization or the Egyptians, which uh, invented better things. Would, but that would be, you could just sit back on the sidelines and watch them do it. It would actually out. be pretty interesting. It actually yeah. is. I'm going to try to do that. That's actually pretty fun. Okay. That would be, yeah, I well, know Weller would, would do it. Yeah, between the two of them, though, we wouldn't get a word in edgewise, <laughs> which, which for our listeners, I think, is a perfect world. <laughs> exactly. We'd introduce it. And then we'd be done. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> and we probably could do four shows on it in one sitting, like just four hours. Because they would, you know, the two of them would go. <laughs> True. <laughs> they have so much knowledge. But if you haven't uh, heard them, by the way, go to our website, everythingoldisnewagain.biz. That's everything old is new again. Dot biz, and you will find shows uh, starring those two uh, talking about lots of interesting topics. We are talking about ancient inventions that I bet you didn't realize that we use today that were invented two and three and four thousand years ago, such as the pen. The pen. You think about this. Hmm. Egyptians uh, credited with discovering a lot of stuff, but one thing that people forget is the pen. They they really, I don't want to ruin any others, but they really use the pen a lot on stuff. To write to stuff write down. To write stuff. And uh, I should, <laughs> you should have gone first. To, why? why don't you tell us your invention first? Because uh, uh, what okay. does a pen use for? Oh, I see. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when you, not that people do this a lot anymore, but if you're taking notes, you open your notebook, which is made out of paper. But did you know that paper was used, a form of paper called papyrus, all the way back in the ancient era days? Ancient era, era? days? Ancient era. era um, by the Egyptians, 
They, uh, where's my page on papyrus? You think, <laughs> you think papyrus, I'd have prepared. the paper. Well, let's in put front it this way me. they then used a pen to write on the papyrus. And papyrus goes way back, if I remember, from Dr. Breyer to like 5000 BC. That's correct, Doug, now that I found my page. Oh, so you don't um, need a page. How about that? Did you know that the material was termed papyrus because it was made from the papyrus plant? How about that? It's like the and, leaf. Uh, yes, Captain Obvious coming in with that. <laughs> uh, it was mass produced in Egypt actually after a while that was a pretty cool thing where yes. they not only just you know ripped off a sheet of paper or two and oh look what i got right they actually mass produced the stuff and that's and how we common. know so much about the egyptians of course they wrote it down on the tombs and so forth but also there's papyrus everywhere yes and it describes and once we've dis- once they decipher the hieroglyphics which is another invention writing in the language then we got to learn about the civilization which is pretty wild now along those lines in the federal courthouse in central Islip, as you walk in Long Island, you walk in on the right side, they have, a, strange, a little museum with lots of different artifacts all the way up from the Egyptian times till now of court reporting. Oh, wow. The Egyptians reported everything that the, the, uh, the pharaoh said. Cool. And they had a court reporter with a pen. Writing wow. down really fast. Also evidence of the on. first fake news ever, <laughs> apparently. That's exactly so. right. <laughs> That's right. And so the question is, um, or the point is that they actually did court reporting before anyone else. And of course, to the, uh, for me in my world, I'm an attorney as well, that is pretty wild to see the, the development and that it started, you know, 4,000 years ago. It's wild. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. All right, so they. Do you, you need an? Uh, do you know? I don't they also uh, created language and <laughs> and the way people talk. Uh, I have another one for you. Yes. All right. Uh, think about dental hygiene. Yes. Huh? Didn't didn't teeth fall out of people's mouths? All the, I mean, what did they do back then to keep the teeth clean and healthy and the gums, all that? Right. Well, did you know that every time you brush your teeth in the morning, what do you use? Toothbrush. You, toothpaste. Mm. Thanks for killing the lead. Uh, tooth, you use tooth. They didn't invent the toothbrush. Apparently. Well, they actually tooth, did. They had, right, if they invented toothpaste, which is where I was yeah. going with this, you'd think they'd have some delivery mechanism to brush They had your teeth. to have invented the toothbrush. But I think the, the toothbrush probably came first. Right. The toothpaste was the key for healthy teeth. Uh, so they actually came up with a way to uh, use something effective on teeth to keep them strong. Uh, some of it was uh, kind of weird. The toothpaste was made of a wide variety of, agree- of, of ingredients like eggshells, ashes, ground-up ox hooves. What can you? What was the thought process behind the ground up ox hooves? Yeah. This would be great to brush my teeth with. <laughs> but apparently, it got in there. Horse, it, maybe you know, is a coarse material. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Or horse. Horse. Okay. Uh, I have two. Oh, and breath mints. Oh, they did that. Believe it or not, yes. yes. Out of what? Out of a mint, I presume. They were made of myrrh, frankincense, and cinnamon. That was boiled in honey. And shaped into small bite-sized pellets they could suck on. That actually does not sound bad. I know. Do they make that anymore? It's I mean, it, with those ingredients? It, I have to check the Linden's and see if that's the same. Or the Let's see. I have some. Ricola. Oh, look at this. Myrrh, frankincense. Yeah. yeah no, I'm kidding. Okay. Now, how about the taxi? Did you realize that the Romans... What is that? Oh, it's my phone. Okay. That's great. The, <laughs> the phone's going off. The Romans invented a taxi meter with two... Um, Dials that when the there was one dial one like a sun face like if you see a sun face or sundial sundial yeah it, but it has it had notches in it so it's a wheel right. with notches that they would put on the axle and they had another one that would connect to that and would connect to a bar that would go up to uh, like a machine on top or a, a disc and a disc on top had uh, like a record player and it had holes for. Uh, stones that would be put in there. Okay. So now you would start the trip, and as the wheel went, the one you know, the, your travels went. It moved the different wheels, and eventually moved the record player, if you want to call that, on the top of this thing. And if it moved it, moved it to a point where the ball or the stone fell through, that was you gonna your your fee for the trip was one stone. And of course, if you went to ten stones, it was ten stones. So, so it they, was it was it was clocking your time in the taxi yes. by the movement of the sun. 
No, no, no. That was just to give you an idea. By the movement of the wheel, the wheel's turning. One wheel turns Oh, so it wasn't an actual wheel. sundial. No, You're no, but it was, it was shaped, like, it was a shaped like a sundial. But it was based on the, the wheel spinning on the ground. Right. I guess I could have said disc would have That's been a better cool. word. That's cool. And, and so then it, it a mechanism to the record player on top and dropped the balls. And that's, so they, You know, it's funny because that's something you'd like you'd see on the Flintstones. Right? Yes. And yeah, you say, and, wow, what a great idea. And they, <laughs> it, it was legit. Exactly. It was there. This is pretty wild. Wow. The ancient Greeks... Had a vending machine. Wow. They invented the vending machine. Wait, so you'd put coins in and something would yes. come out? Created by Hero of Alexandria. He was hero. a hero. Yeah. Right. The original vending machine dispensed water when a coin was put in. Huh. Put the coin in, uh, it fell on a pan that was itself attached to a lever, which then opened a valve and the water would fall out. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What about Snickers? Do, how, how does that way? Uh, yeah, I don't think so, but it's worth a shot. Uh, you have any others? Any any odd ones that no one's ever can figure out what they are? I have one. You ready for it? Sure. Uh, it's a it's what's called the Colombian Golden Airplanes. They existed in the fourth through the seventh centuries A.D. They are golden airplanes. They're about two or three inches in in size, and their format is they look like birds or insects or real airplanes. And they're thinking if they weren't birds, and they don't really look like birds too much. But if they weren't birds, why are they doing something in the shape of an oh, airplane? Here we go with the UFO. So thing. The, the yeah, doc- is that where you're going with this? Yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Viviani, is a, a resident ufologist, will have to answer that question. Why is the default to <laughs> not knowing what something does always must be UFO, <laughs> must be an alien invasion of some sort? Well, either that or they're golden uh, birds that they use for kids to play with, you know. So little figurines, of course, were... Something that goes way back to the Egyptians, actually. And they've got, if you look at King uh, Tut's uh, Tutankhamun, whatever, his his exhibit, which I, we used to be in Philly, I don't know where it is now. Uh, they had lots of different games and toys and figurines that they used all the time. Cool. They had dice games as well. Ah, they, they, they also invented wagering and yes, gambling. The Egyptians sure did. Egyptians had some wild stuff, man. They really did. Any others off the top of your head? Yeah, here's one that's kind of weird. I think they they think they know what this is. This is much more of a visual thing, so maybe we can at some point get right. this up on YouTube. But they think uh, this goes back to 1600 BC. It's this like looks like a giant urn, very elaborate looking, but it was they think it was the first seismoscope, something that could predict earthquakes. Um, and, and this isn't um, Egyptian or Roman, it's actually Chinese. Um, the the uh, remarkable Chinese inventor, I'm going to screw up the name, but I believe it's Zhang Hang, or Hang. Uh, so when an earthquake approached, Zhang's device dropped a bronze ball from a dragon head into the mouth of a toad sitting below. So it's also it's like an urn. So you've got the these very elaborate um, dragon 3D like configurations hanging off the off the bowl, and then the ball would fall out of the mouth into the frog waiting on the table below the bowl. And when that happened, um, you knew that there was an earthquake coming. Wow, this wild stuff. Wacky, wild stuff. <laughs> we'll be back with this and everything old is new again. I did it in 15 Let's seconds. Talk about though. Nikola Tesla and see what he invented. I bet you know a lot of his stuff. We'll be back with right this and everything old is new again. <laughs> You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Yeah, hey, Douglas and David, i got to say, I was interviewed on NPR by Scott Simon, another hero, but you guys are my new heroes, and I easily include you into the Scott Simon milieu of brilliant guys on radio. Oh, man. wow, so. thank you. That's sweet. That's a, I like that compliment so much that I've now played, played it, it twice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is uh, Douglas Viviani with David Cohen here on Everything Old is New Again, and we're diving into the topic of ancient inventions that are used today that uh, you don't realize uh, were invented a long time ago. We're now not going that far back in time. We're going back to the late 1800s, the early 1900s. But I want to focus on a gentleman who's very much overlooked and is someone that has invented so many things and just got burned all along the way. He's sort of like this guy that has the great ideas but doesn't know how to promote them, if you will, or didn't have the money behind him. Because he worked for Thomas Edison, and then over money, right at the bat, he quit. 
They had problems. And from that point on, Edison and the gentleman's name is Nikolai Tesla um, were at odds. And Edison seemed to get his way all along the way. And I think just now we're starting to realize how important Tesla was and, and all of his inventions, all. I'll say, I don't know if that's not fair to say, but most of them were better than Thomas Edison's. Even today is going strong with the Tesla car, which is, you know, pretty amazing. If Well, his name has been lent to it because of that. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason why they used his name. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. He's becoming more and more popular. And, of course, Tesla is an inventive gentleman, and that's an inventive car, right? It's yes. more or less electric car, right? That's right. So... Let's get to that, because that electricity was something that he was very much a part of. Before I get to that, since we're on the radio and fascinated by the radio, I wanted to talk about the radio. Did you know that Tesla actually, not Marconi, invented the radio? No. 1895. He was getting ready to transmit a radio signal the distance of 50 miles, but before he could do that, his lab burned down. Oh. Denying the test. Or delaying it in any way. So meanwhile, in England, the Italian man uh, Marconi, working on a wireless a, a telegraph, not a radio, was granted the patent in 1896 for that device. His system was much different than the one Tesla built, of course, because Tesla was with uh, without wires. Hmm. So uh, using only two circuits and unable to transmit long distances, Marconi still got the patent, and Tesla's invention would use multiple circuits and could transmit much longer distance he was uh, denied the patent at that time however in, in two years later in 1897 in the u.s it was grant he applied for it and he was granted it in 1900 so if you look it up you'll see that tesla in the united states is the inventor of the radio or was he because at the same time marconi went to the patent office and he was turned down for the patent because tesla already had it but the story goes on so let me just say, Tesla's got the patent, right, for the radio. Right. Marconi does not. Mm -hmm. Tesla be, it came up with the idea first right. and a better idea. But it's uh, his whole thing burned down. Burned couldn't down, do couldn't okay. do it. But he got the patent in the U.S. However, Marconi contacts Thomas Edison. <sighs> Thomas Edison finances and talks to the patent office because Edison had tons of patents knew them pretty well. It was a small organization back in the day. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Marconi gets the patent that he wanted for the radio. Perhaps out of spite. Yes, and be and became the man that we think of as the one that invented radio. Tesla invented the radio. Wow. I mean, they're both simultaneous, same time, and all this. I mean, they're not putting right. Marconi down. But Tesla was right there and had a better invention, a better idea, and because of fate, and I wonder, you ever see that show where they go back in time they, and they try to fix things or ruin things, time tunnel and whatever? I wonder if Tesla was snake bitten by Edison, who learned how to time travel, and then just destroyed all of Tesla's inventions. So you're saying Edison traveled back in time? Uh, that's a good point. So Edison's, how could we do this? <laughs> uh, uh, something happened. Well, well, maybe Edison just... Uh, so, uh, he just didn't like him, he, right? I mean, they had a falling out. Maybe he out lit the and... fire at, on the barn, at the oh. barn. Oh, Forget oh. time travel. What am I thinking? You could just yeah, lit, lit the fire. A little arson. Yeah. yeah. You have one there? I mean, Tesla was a cool cat, man. What else did he got? He was. Uh, so an another, I guess... By the way, he died penniless. I just want you to know. Oh, all these inventions died penniless. That's terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. He can't even share in the Tesla car oh. proceeds. <laughs> so uh, he... Uh, okay, so this is about alternating current. And you're probably saying, wow, that's exciting. ACDC, not the band, though, right? Oh, you stole my joke. Oh! Sorry. Go ahead. I'll cut that out. You Swiping say jokes. <laughs> um, here we go. So, all right. How do I explain this? So, Edison came up with um, uh, the DC current. So, uh, picture it like a battery. It sends energy one way. There's no way to get it coming back. Direct current, right. Direct well, directly current. Directly DC, way. direct current, or David Cohen. Right. So, uh, what Tesla, Tesla came up with something called the alternating current, or AC, which basically is a two-way current. So, picture it as like, if you have a ball, you're throwing it a ball um, with the with Edison's AC current, it's going one way, it's going to lose momentum, and it's never going to come back. With Tesla's, uh, sorry, uh, Edison was DC. With Tesla's AC current, picture someone catching the ball and sending it back to you. So it's, it's a two-way uh, thing going on. And um, it's the, 
ACDC is basically what we use today. It's very common, but again... But um, AC can go long, huge, huge distances, Oh, incredible distances. And DC cannot. Exactly. And uh, that was a tremendous invention we still use to this day. Who gets credit for the electricity? Edison. Benjamin Franklin and Edison, yeah, right? Yeah. No one talks about this guy. He, he, we're using his stuff. We're not using DC. What was going on with this guy? Like, like why? It's a story here. I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's a great tragic. story. We've got to contact... Um, Maybe Terry Winter to write something. I mean, this is this is a story. That's true. Or we should write something to him. They always say, you know, they throw ideas at these writers. No, and say, let's write we'll it. come up with a storyboard yeah. and we'll we'll pitch the idea for a, uh, a Tesla uh, um, like limited series on Netflix. Or I'm something. telling you, it's tremendous. Uh, we can make Edison the villain and go from there. We'll call it Foiled Again or something. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Say no, don't leave it to me for the title. Now listen, is something out on Long Island in Stony Brook? It's still there to this day, a 185-foot-tall, mushroom-shaped tower. Have you seen this? No. And that's, you know, sort of where we broadcast out of. It's real, pretty close. Uh, he secured, Tesla did, in 1901, a $150,000 financier to build that tower. So what for? What's that about? His idea was we don't need to transmit electricity through wires. We can transmit it through the air. When you charge your phone, sometimes they have those wireless, wireless chargers. chargers. Yeah. What do you think that Same is? Same concept. Exactly. Hmm. We finally caught on. He was going to build these towers everywhere, and electricity, by the way, was going to be free. Ah. And that's why it didn't work. Edison fought, fought on this one as well. Edison won out with the wires. But think about it. All he would do was build these towers, generate the energy, and energy would be through the air. And as we have now, wireless cell phones and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, and wireless charging, we'd have electricity just in the air, part of our system of living, and you just turn things on. You don't have to plug a thing in. Wow. And that works. Obviously, you're seeing it work now. Man, this guy was like great. Think about it. And 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 that's and that's foiled uh, by this gentleman. There is a, a, going to be a new museum for Tesla. I from what I understand, out on Long Island. I'm going to. I've contacted them. They've ignored me at this point. So they're not discovering. They're not really open minded. You are the Tesla. I'm the Tesla for the Tesla Museum. The Tesla Museum. <laughs> so I'm going to keep trying because they haven't really opened yet. They're still building and all that. So maybe that's the reason why. How about you? Have any other ones? I have. An, I have another. Go ahead. Again with the electricity business, the fluorescent light bulb. Hmm. He invented the fluorescent light bulb, which we all know it may not be the greatest light. Some people don't like it, but it lasts longer, is better for the environment than the Edison light bulb. Who right. gets credit for the light bulb? Edison? Yeah. Mm. Whose light bulb are they all using now in every office building in the world? Tesla. Thank you. Thank you. Sad. Very sad. <laughs> no, we laugh at it, but it really it's a sad life. Because this yeah. guy, you know, fought... And he really died penniless. Penniless. And without, I mean, without any recognition for these things. Uh, the guy was was uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, it's sad he invented the Tesla coil, which is something else that's complicated to describe. He invented the magnifying, uh, you know, the electric magnifying glass. What they use now, if you're, if you're in science, you're not using that one you had in you know in elementary school. You use the sun and you you right. burn up an ant with it. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Uh, he, he had you know it would all adjust electronically the the various uh, levels of amplification uh, to see magnifying things and uh, he invented that so he's really into all these uh, tremendous inventions sad that he didn't I mean is this I could there, go on there must be books written about him I would imagine you really right? should I, I, I'm really interested in in, uh, in learning more about him uh, he did the in induction motor which is a motor that uh, uses AC um, which is basically the electric car and that's why that I would suggest that Tesla car the electric car is using his name yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he invented the electric sure. that was, car that's first. Elon Musk, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so maybe we should contact Musk. Yeah, he'll come on. You know, sure. Why see. not? <laughs> He's got nothing better to do. Well, why would they not want to have a little piece of the pie here and enjoy some thrills and some adventure on the radio and pro pro project Reach their out to intelligence? Him. Yeah, I will actually. I don't think it's a bad idea. Why not? Elon, come on, the show. Talk to us about Tesla. Or you could sponsor us too. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Oh, that would be nice. Sure, be two for one. Right. All right, uh, we're going to continue with... Send us up on his, on his spaceship. That would be great. I would go. You wouldn't. I would not go. Yeah, I would definitely do it. Yeah. All right. Good I'll... luck. Good luck with that. All right. We'll be... <laughs> on both fronts. The fact, getting in there and then the journey. <laughs> Regardless, we'll be back right at this and everything old is new again. We are going to talk about our own inventions very so shortly right after this and everything old is new again.
Now, back to America's Entertainment Pop Culture Talk Show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Hey, this is Dr. Peter Weller, a member of the major motion picture community and television community and the artist community, and now I'm the community of everything old is new again. And I don't know, it's my third, fourth, fifth, sixth, my hundredth time on this show, but it will, how, however many it is, it is constantly a privilege and a thrill to be with Douglas and David on Everything Old is New Again. Wow, if we only had all of you thinking the same way that Peter Weller thinks, we would be an international success here yes. Everything Old is New Again. That's true. Well, I would suggest anyone who is listening feels that way. Probably. Well, how about you spread the word, guys? Get yeah. on the internet. Come on, man. Spread our videos. Spread uh, word to your, be- your buddies, your friends, family. Talk about us. Build us up. Let's go. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. How about that? <laughs> is there a problem? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to go somewhere with it. Anyway, we're back, and we're talking and finishing off our discussion of inventions we have a few inventions of our own that I want to throw out there. David's got a, a, a few and a few comments upon mine, so I'm going to throw some inventions out there. Now, with respect to copyright law and patent law, since I am discussing these now on the radio, as of today, the day that you're hearing these inventions, these inventions are mine. You can't steal them, in other words. Think Don't about you the have law. to get a copyright? First in time, first in right. Copyright is only filing it. In an office somewhere, but if you have, have you broadcasted publicly or we know what Edison did? Edison Thomas says who Tesla? We'll get to that. Yeah, oh, we did get to that. Yes, um, what what Edison did was he wrote down his inventions, and he mailed them to himself, and there was a court case where he, someone challenged. I don't remember exactly what it was, but challenged his um, <clears throat> t- patent on an invention. He went to court. He brought the envelope that was sealed with the post office stamp on it, or whatever date it was. They opened it up. There was his invention, that was the date, and he won. You don't have to copyright it with a patent office or anything like that? You should, but you don't have to. Doesn't you don't mean have that to. It's created the, the date you created. The rest is a matter of proof. So you're saying you have a case, so if someone hears one of your inventions, right. goes out, gets a patent for it, makes millions of dollars, you have grounds to sue him. Absolutely, because I've created the idea. I'm, I'm producing it, and I'm, a distri- I'm, I'm creating it right now and telling you what it is now. I'm distributing it now, so the day that you hear it is the day uh, that... I'm, okay. You know, that's the timestamp. Sadly, it is like Edison mailing it to himself, <laughs> you exactly, saying it on our show. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> not many people could do that, but I could do it. <laughs> so now, here's the thing. Okay. I am constantly, constantly annoyed when I go and I have to get changed from wherever, getting a cup of coffee or something, or buying dinner, whatever. It's always this business, and I, I don't know why, why this is. Why are you is. carrying money, though? Let me, can I just <laughs> ask you, that, like, who carries money anymore? <laughs> that's a good point. Well, I have kids, and they, I have to have money for the school. and, and, and uh, Like little donations or yeah, like they candy. For, and, right. They're always looking candy? for money for, I don't know, okay. I don't know yeah. for a book and whatever. So I always have to have cash. Right. So anyway, so I get the cash, and I'm constantly getting, you know, why, you use a, a co- if you're going to buy a cup of coffee for a dollar and a half, you're going to use a credit card? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no, I don't, I don't of course. do that. It's annoying. I, don't, I never carry cash. That's an annoyance. They see you coming. not. What's it? No, they don't care. Yeah, They're put, you right. just stick. They yeah, don't but it even, costs they them even, money. But they don't even take your credit card anymore. You put it in the little in the little uh, card reader, or, or, right. or or use Apple Pay with your phone. All right. All right so anyway, so I can't stand let, let's it turn back the t- let's they, turn back the clock. Let's pretend it's 1956 exactly. and you're dealing with coins. <laughs> Go ahead. And they, they're balancing these coins on the bills. What do you mean? They, they, they Who give is? you the change back. I, lost you. I give them ten dollar oh, the, bill. They give me eight eight fifty back. I get eight dollars, and on, and on top of that, there's a a, a coin, and you know, a, two, I don't know, two dimes and a nickel and a quarter, and they're balancing that on the on, on the, the bill, bill and giving it to me. Okay. I'm, I don't. I'm not in the circus. This is not a tightrope. I don't need <laughs> to. You know, this is not a game. Could you just give me the chain? It's like they don't want to touch your hand. God forbid. We're so germ phobic in this world. You think that's why? It's got to be. Why else? Okay. It drives me nuts. But they're giving you. I see. So they're handing you the bill. I'm just picturing this. They're giving you the bill. Literally on top of the bills, balanced on them, all these coins. I see. Yeah. Why are you doing that? So then you have to take the bill and, and the balance, coins inevitably fall. Bal- balancing the coins on the bill. Correct. Which obviously could easily fall. Of course. All right. Try doing it on purpose and try doing that with your neighbor and let them you know, see that uh, that coins don't fall. They're falling. I don't care how you know balanced you are. So I assume you have a solution so to I this dilemma. So I have a dilemma. pocket. I have a pocket. It's, it's, it's called the funnel change. Well, you have a pocket in my pants that will extend. It recedes and extends. This it's sounds gonna, like a real practical yes, solution. It's going to extend. 
extend, and I'm going to say, put the change here in the funnel. They'll drop it in like at a, at a toll booth, and it, it'll, you know, the money will funnel right into my pocket. So is it an actual separate funnel that you're carrying with you, or is it, it actually... built into my pocket. So you're buying pants... Yes, with a that, funnel So in. every manufacturer of clothing yes. now has to add this funnel to pants. Correct, and they can add a few change to the... That's uh, such a simple... Why didn't I think of that? Thank you. Such a simple... Simple solution. ideas. Simple and elegant. How about garbage? <laughs> when you've got garbage, it smells like crazy, that kitchen smelling like heck. How about you, you have something different? The garbage can itself is not necessarily smelling. It's hopefully you're putting in a, a glad bag or a plastic bag in right. there, right? How about infuse those plastic bags with perfume or whatever it might be that don't smells? Don't they have scented bags? I don't know if they do, and I've, I, I've not they seen They don't them. work, I can tell you that. Well, they should work, and if they don't, I can invent them to work. Interesting. Because it, it should be like this. My, smell my garbage would be like, smell my garbage bag, it would be called, right? <laughs> and finally, like, like the, t- the <laughs> tagline would be, finally, you don't have to take the garbage out to change the smell in your kitchen. From now on, the only bad smell in your kitchen will be your fine cooking. Ah. How about that? But to smell my garbage, you got to think of a better name than that. I mean, if I no, said to you... No, smell my garbage. You got to smell your garbage. Yes, you are, because it smells like the forest. It smells like misty morning, summer dew. How about that? I think you're going to okay. like that idea. All right. No, I like the idea. I think the name could use some work, but I like the idea. Oh, you don't like my, my tag of taking out the garbage and the smells? Smell my... No, to smell my garbage just From now on, awful. the only bad smell in your kitchen no, will I get, be your I, fine cooking. I get that. But if you get it, the bad smell, is, the bad smell shouldn't be... Your cooking should be... Too good, much but. explaining, okay. because all I'm going to hear is smell my garbage garbage bags. Right, and I'm like, why would I want to smell your garbage? Here's my favorite one. <laughs> You ready for this? I think the idea is good, though. Thank you. Go ahead. You remember when you were a kid and you were in school and you had those pens and they had four colors? Oh, those are great. You'd push down down if you wanted black or push down if you... And then the uh, the ink ink, uh, pen thing would come through the bottom and you'd have a new color. Exactly. Huh. Now... Well, they have that already. They do. Uh But they don't have what I'm going to do. Okay. They have... When I go to picnics, when I, I I go outside barbecuing and eating outside, I'm always bringing all these condiments with me. It makes me crazy. The ketchup, the mustard, the mayo, the oh, it's nuts. Why not put them all into a a bigger pen? Of course, it's that pen, but a much bigger pen, so to speak, that had the compartments in, it, and each compartment has the condiments. <laughs> I love it. So you've got the. <laughs> so now that's great. Instead of so having push to, down the yellow, yeah, for the push mustard. down the yellow for the mustard. Put and you can have an optional on top with a. Ca- you can have a little screw top on the top. Optional pickle dispenser or a pickle top, and you can just screw off the top and put the pickles in there. So now wow. all in one condiments. So okay, if you like ketchup and mustard combined, can you push both the red and the yellow together? And I'm it sure we could. Out? I'm sure we could do oh, that. Oh, that's awesome. Why not? That's awesome. All right, so you, I like that. I, I don't know what to call that, though. I don't know what the name for that is. I have to figure that out. So you would carry it with... You would, you would just have it like you, you have You could put it on your belt. You could have a belt size. You could have a bigger size for yeah. you know bigger events. A condiment dispenser hanging yeah. off your belt. Yeah, okay. All right. I like it. <laughs> I'm sure you have one or two. I, I would use it. Thank you. Absolutely would use it. It's a good one. I'd never remember to bring it with me during the day, but <laughs> if I yeah, had but it if with you're me, going, you got to remember all this other stuff. It's a drag. And yeah. you got to, you know, it's That's you got to keep unpacking it and bringing it out. Do you usually travel with condiments in your pocket? No, but uh <laughs> <clears throat> All right. No, but I would t- I would take it outside, you know, just for the just to, for barbecuing at the house. There you go. Yeah. Save me two trips to the kitchen. That's true. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. So not a travel thing, but like a household item. Correct. That you can use. Yeah. Got why it. not? Perfect. All right. Yeah, do you have another? I have one last one with a pen then. Go ahead. You're hesitating. I have a, a, a pen. You, you write and you cross things out. Instead of an eraser, you know, like pencils have erasers, pens right. don't. Right. On the top of the pen, a little dispenser, you open it up and you have white out at the top of the pen. How would you apply the white out? White out, if you know, it comes out. It's got a little bit of a uh, brush on it. Where the, the top. So it would be a tiny, like a just micro like the, brush. To, yeah. So like a picture like like, a regular, picture out a white out bottle. Yeah, just miniaturize it. Miniaturize it and sit it on top of the pen. Yeah. That's interesting. Why not? I like it. Good ideas. David Cohen has one. I know he's going to do this in, in a minute, and he can do it. Oh, my go, God. Go, really? It, uh, it's, a very, it's, a, it's a very conceptual thing. Celebrity it, zoo. It's called a celebrity zoo. So you pay hundreds of dollars to go to your nearest uh, hockey rink or, or venue, whatever it is, theater. And on the stage, uh, soundproof one-way mirrors, 
uh, the biggest celebrities in the world at a cocktail party, going into different rooms, numbered rooms. You're sitting there in the audience with headphones. You want to hear two celebrities having a discussion in room seven. You pr- press the room seven button, and you're eavesdropping on what two of your favorite celebrities are talking about at the moment. That's nice. my and then idea. They press number, room number you know, nine, and you hear those celebrities talking about those celebrities in room seven and how much they don't like them and so forth. That and would be really so cool. Have- I mean, think about it. Just and, and you'd be up close. It doesn't have to be a big theater. Right. So you're seeing these huge celebrities right. n- just talking amongst themselves, and it's like you're at the party would with them. Would we be invited to that? Would we categor- be categorized as people that could be inside that event. I see us nothing more than an audience member at this oh, point. Oh, I would say we could go, but we could go in there with our dispenser and we could serve burgers and, and I could use the dispenser to give them ketchup and mustard. That's true. We could be servants. <laughs> That's about as close as we're going to get. But the, mirror, the, the looking in would, ha- would have to be like a one-way mirror. One-way mirror. So, so, this, right, so the celebrities can't see you looking at them. So you're removing and that part of the Zoom alcohol, concept. right? Alcohol to the audience and to the celebrities. Uh, Love it. Sorry to interrupt, but we're coming back next week and everything old is new again, continuing all the fun of thrills and adventure of pop culture entertainment. Join us. Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by the law office of Douglas Viviani. Douglas Viviani has been providing quality legal service for over 26 years. We're a general practice firm and can handle any legal matter you may have for a reasonable fee. If you're involved in a car accident, starting a business, planning your estate, or need a criminal attorney, please call 631-681-1910 or email us at vivianilaw at aol.com for a free consultation. Get the justice you deserve. Contact the law office of Douglas Viviani at vivianilaw at aol.com. You've been listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's pop culture entertainment talk show. Find us on the web at everythingoldisnewagain.biz. That's dot biz. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad station.